Hey, what's up, everybody? I've had a lot of people asking me uh, about my QAV 210 here that uh, I just finished yesterday. Uh, pretty proud of it. Took my time with it. Uh, made sure I kind of tried to hide everything I could without adding any additional weight and uh, you know, didn't want to cut any corners with it. So it, it turned out pretty good. I haven't been able to fly it yet. So you know, as far as functionality, it works good in my living room, but as far as, you know, throwing some throttle behind it, haven't been able to do that yet. So hopefully I'll be able to get it out this weekend and uh, put some air under it. And if I do, video will be up right behind it. But anyway, we'll get right into it. Uh, we'll start off on the outside here. So first things first, Cobra, uh, the 2204, 2300 KV motors. You know, it's hard to go wrong. Uh, you got Dow props, 50, 45, uh, version twos. I haven't flown with the five inch versions yet, but the six inch versions that I do have are pretty much as they say, indestructible. Uh, I haven't broken a prop yet. I have bent them. I've had them, uh, you know, have the white uh, stress lines in the props. You know, of course at that point, I trash them. So although they say indestructible, they're not, I guess that's not uh, completely true, but for what they are, man, I, I might replace one or two dial props for every 20 HQ and gym fans that I would replace before. So for just kind of bashing around, uh, playing around in the park, man, I love these things. So then we got the Zeus or the MRM Zeus uh, 20 amp little bees. Got the uh, the motor wires I did not cut completely down the size so instead of doing that on this frame anyway if I'd have done that you know it would have left uh, really short wires for my motors I've done it on other builds before and it works well but you know anytime I want to change something it becomes a little bit of a pain because I can't keep cutting those wires down without having to replace them so what I did on this one is I took the motor wires ran them over top of the ESC and back around and soldered them on the uh, the bottom side of the ESC. And actually, uh, if you notice anything here, the one thing that I did do different is three of my ESCs, the motor wires go over top and come around to the bottom to get soldered on. And one actually goes under the bottom and comes around the top. So if you have OCD, I'm sorry, and you're probably screaming at me right now. But anyway, the uh, motor or the well the power wires you know the power in the ground and the signal and ground came on these ESCs instead of replacing them like I do for most uh, I just cut them down the size ran the power and ground where they needed to go cut them uh, soldered them into place same thing for the uh, signal and the ground uh, the way the nays is set up on this the signal and ground connections are all here on the front so for the two ESCs on the front, all I did was I brought them right here, measured them and cut them to size. The ESCs on the back, I fed them underneath my power distribution board and come up in the front to solder them into place. The only other thing that I have ran that direction is my video transmitter. The wires coming off of it drop down to the bottom, come around, there's a single zip tie here in the front everything matches up to that one zip tie and then goes in its place uh, for my OSD I'm using the OS Doge or OS Doji and uh, the camera and the VTX connections are in the front of it as well so it allows everything to be real nice and neat and just kind of plug in straight up the front the only thing different is uh, with your OS Doge and your nays there's three connections that uh, kind of piggyback on each other you have your TX and RX that uh, if you can see here it's just a little male and female connector connects them in so they just plug in straight together and there's another one that's feeding 5 volt power to my nays uh, it's actually up here in the front and then the uh, battery sensor in the back and my power distribution board is a Brotronics Uber Distro it has current sensing and I believe also voltage sensor maybe uh, don't quote me on that but I definitely know it has a current sensor I have a short wire going from the current sensor straight up to my OS Doge 
uh, I'll quit calling it OS Doge now and just call it OSD. And uh, that's the only other wire I actually have plugged into there. Uh, flip it around this other side so you can see my connections for my receiver. There is no actual plug on my receiver now. I went through and cut off all the uh, connections and just straight wired it from there. And the wires come up underneath the nays and then they plug straight in soldered directly into place. Now I'm sure you already noticed I don't have any other real connections. I have a, I have a plug on my camera and one plug on my VTX and other than that everything else is direct soldered on the board. Uh, I do have a buzzer here on the back same thing direct soldered in and I believe that is all. Uh, you know the camera just same thing so the parts list uh, as I said we got Cobra 2204s 2300 KVs uh, for the camera it's a Fox ear F-O-X-E-E-R uh, it's a 600 TVL CCD camera uh, RR sensitive and uh, just you know I like to play around the night sometimes so figure why not and uh, 2.8 millimeter lens the uh, as I said before we have the Nays 32 revision 6 I run base flight on it uh, OS Doge and Brotronics Uber Distro we got the uh, Zeus the MRM Zeus little b 20 amps uh, D4R2 receiver the video transmitter is a Fox here TM200 200 milliwatt uh, 5.8 gigahertz 40 channel race band uh, VTX the antenna so we'll go on that one now so for the antenna we have the uh, it's just a blue beam uh, air screw this is the cover that used to be on it so I cut it off and what I did for that was after I cut it off I took hot glue and here let's see, let's see here so what I did is I took hot glue and I would start on the edges and just start coating it as I would roll it around on my fingers and after a while the hot glue would start stretching and it would cover the lobes it's not the prettiest thing but I mean it's it's pretty pretty stout you know I can't physically squeeze those lobes to bend them and the first time I took the cap off the blue beam and went flying with it it worked great until I crashed and on that first crash I mean you know obviously it just mangled it so I started looking at options and really I haven't noticed any kind of signal loss yet I'm sure there is but for what I do just flying around a park you know this is more than more than sufficient I can't complain and for you know the, the actual being as stiff as it is I'm for what I want it's great so uh, we'll go on next to my receiver antennas the what I did for that is this is just a regular uh, paracord from uh, Walmart I got some right here I'm sure you can find it anywhere I mean it's just there's nothing special with it you know just a big roll of, roll of cord and if you look inside you got the white strands so let's cut a piece off here and all you do is once you cut it to whatever size you want you just take the white strands out of the center and once it's gone you're left with this hollow tube and you know while you're working with it it's going to try to fray on the ends a little bit so if you just take a lighter or you know a heat gun anything you know just a simple heat gun melt stands of it makes it easier to work with and once you get it you know able to work get your heat shrink cut it down to whatever size you want on the ends of it it's easier just to put it over the end and then kind of twist and push as you feed the heat shrink over top of the paracord and once you get it over the end just kind of straighten everything back out you'll have two pieces one on you know each side and for your antenna on the sides on just about every build I do anymore I'll put a zip tie and angle the zip tie how you want your antennas to angle take your little uh, 
sleeve feed the zip tie and the antenna over top of the sleeve or over top put the sleeve over top of your antenna and zip tie once it's in place then you just take your heat shrink feed it over you know half and half over your paracord and your antenna and once you have everything lined up then you just take your heat gun lighter whatever you have and you know heat your heat shrink up to hold everything in place and it does good I you know I can't complain I haven't had any issues with doing it that way yet and uh, other than that I don't think there's really anything that I haven't covered uh, you know, in the description I will have links to everything uh, as far as all the parts where everything come from I'll also have link to an imager album that will give you kind of a, a closer look at the wiring and you know just the quad in general so if there's anything that I didn't cover or that you would like to like to see better or want me to cover whether it's this quad or you know anything else I'm not the not the smartest person in the world when it comes to this obviously uh, things are always changing but you know I'm, I'm here to learn just as everybody else is so if there's anything that I didn't talk about right or you know you can see that I could do different or do better you know please let me know you know leave a leave a comment here and, and that way we can all learn about it but you know please subscribe like the video uh, I, I finally did surpass 100 subscribers which is pretty awesome I was pretty happy about that so thank you everybody that's been watching the videos and I look forward to making more can't wait to get this thing out fly it this weekend get the maiden flight up on YouTube as well appreciate you watching catch y'all on the next one